Welcome to this video where we're going to be talking about Llama 3 and why it's important for us. Did you know that if you try to use ChatGPT to write specific content right now, it will not work? That is because ChatGPT is only trained until about six months ago. However, we can use Llama 3, or more specifically, we can use Perplexity with Llama 3 in order to give up to date information to our writing AIs. So if you don't know, on the 18th of April 2024, Meta released Llama 3, which is their most capable openly available, which is a very strange word to use instead of open source. I guess it's not open source. It's openly available, LLM to date. Now they currently have a 8 billion and 70 billion parameter model, which is pretty damn big. And you can see here that compared to Mistral, or Gemini 1.5, or even Claude Sonnet, it's actually done pretty damn well. Now, for context, Claude 3 Sonnet is about the level of ChatGPT 4, I would say. So if it's beating ChatGPT 4, I think they've selected these models very, very carefully, because if it was Opus, this would not be beating Opus, basically. But what I will say is a model that is connected to the internet can be significantly or infinitely better than a model that isn't connected to the internet, depending on the context. So you can see here, the chart below shows aggregated results of our human evaluation, our human evaluations, right? That seems a little bit dodgy, across of these categories. Wait, is that even grammatically correct? The chart below shows aggregated results of our human evaluations across of these, okay? Across of these categories and prompts against Claude Sonnet, Mistral Medium, and GPT 3.5. So again, you can see, both Llama models are actually doing pretty well. I do think these are selectively um, selected models. Like they have specifically haven't put Opus here because Opus would crap all over them, but it is what it is. The model looks pretty good, but why is this important to us? Now, if you don't know, you can actually connect your LLMs to the internet using perplexity. However, in my opinion, until this update, the models that perplexity were using were not good enough to give you the right information in a nice context, in a, in a nice, short, easily digestible format. The problem with that is that when you then pass the information on to ChatGPT or to Claude, the information needs to be correct in the first place for the final article to be good. So let me just talk a little bit about what I mean. If you go on Google and type in best grants for small businesses in the US, now you'll see there are a lot of grants. If you say to ChatGPT without any other context, write me an article about, I don't know, NASE growth grant, it will try and give you as much information as possible. So let's actually do this as a live test. You can see here, it says that NSE growth grant, the national offers grants of up to 4,000 to business owners in the US, okay? So let's just take this as an example. So let's say, I'll use 3.5 because I think ChatGPT4 might cheat. Write me an article about the NASE growth grant in the US. So it hasn't actually even given a dollar amount, so you can instantly see why this would not be a good article. Obviously, I'm using 3.5. The only reason I'm using 3.5 is because I have a sneaky feeling that ChatGPT4 will use the internet. So we'll say, uh, how much can you get? Okay, so this is not true. The exact amount that can be attained through the NASE growth grant program can vary depending on several factors. There is still no dollar amount here because it doesn't know. It's just, it doesn't want to say it doesn't know. Okay, this is something that ChatGPT does all the freaking time. Instead of saying, I don't know, it says something like, the exact amount they're giving it, and it can vary depending on several factors. No, no. It says right here, up of up to $4,000. So now if we just go on perplexity, for example, and we're not gonna use the, um, the API just yet, I will show you at the end of this video a really good use case, and I'll give you some absolute gold at the end of the video. So I highly suggest sticking around until the very end. I'm gonna show you how you can do this on scale but let's just ask it very quickly. 
Uh, what is the NASC grant in the US? What does it say? The NASC offers the growth grant program in the US, which provides small business grants of up to $4,000. So you can instantly see why it's so useful to have models that are connected to the internet. Now, this is most likely using Llama. The reason I say that is because I'm not logged in. Llama is a free model. So it just makes perfect sense for, you know, perplexity as a business to use Llama to do all of its not logged in searching. So hopefully that demonstrates the point as to why this is such an important update. Now let's talk about how we can use this to grow our websites. If you go to the description of this video, there is this GitHub link. If you don't know anything about GitHub, you can just follow these very simple steps. Press this code button here, press download as zip, right click here, show in folder, Ex right click, extract all, extract, and then right click here and open with code. Now, if you don't have the open with code button, you can just open Visual Studio Code, go to file, open folder, and then find this folder in downloads and then open this folder. That's another option. I've just given you two options to doing this very, very easily. Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to right click on env.example and put a dot at the beginning of it and then delete everything after the V of env. And then you need to start filling in this information. This env file will feed all of this information to the bot that we're gonna be using. Now, let me just quickly explain what the bot does. This is the Python script. If you don't know anything about Python, it might look a bit confusing. However, all it does is it sends this call to perplexity, it gathers information, and then it sends that information to a Claude writing prompt. Okay, that's all this script does, is it searches for information on perplexity, and then it sends the information it finds to a writing prompt with Claude. So all we need to do is fill in this information. So let's do your brand name is Grants, for US, I don't know, I've made that up. Business type is um, business helping small businesses finding grants in the US. And then keywords.txt, all you need to do is line by line, add some keywords. So you can use ChatGPT for this. You can actually just drag this like this. So I just Drag, then control C, clicking keywords, control A, control V. There you go, you can see. Now this will write one article for every line. So this will write 24. I keep saying the word articles. We can also just use the word pages. Doesn't actually matter. So you don't need to change keywords.txt. It's actually already okay. Sample.txt, I would recommend finding uh, one of your articles or one of your blog posts that's already ranking. I'm just not gonna put anything because I don't actually have anything in this niche. Image URLs file path. Now, I don't know if you have to run this. I can't actually fully remember, but what you should do is you should go to terminal, new terminal. And then if you want some of your images to be included in the final article, you can actually just put your sitemap here. So two men dot it slash sitemap by XML. I'm just using two men as an example and then do Python. Oh, I need to CD into Lord Autoblogger, there we go. Python image scraper.py. What this does is it scrapes your sitemap and it finds images, but I don't actually think it's necessary for this particular running of this um, script. So we will carry on. So again, I don't think either of these are necessary, so we'll just leave them blank. And then you need to get your Anthropic API key and your Perplexity API key. So we'll go to console.anthropic.com. I will be deleting this API key at the end of this video, so please don't bother trying to copy it. It will be gone by the time you try and copy it. So we'll put that here, and then we'll do the same thing with perplexity. So we'll just sign in, and we'll click on my name here, click on API, and this should give me my API key. So we'll copy this and put that here. Use perplexity is true. Content type is grant information in United States. Dates. Let's do serious, helpful US English. I was I was doing this for a client. It works really, really well, by the way. And then this is the perplexity prompt. So find 
as much detailed and official information about this grant in in the United States. Give me specifics. Any .gov websites can be used for finding images. Okay, and then we'll do Python big void dot pi. This might give me an error because some of the yeah some of the files are empty here. So we do actually have to run the image scraper for this to work. Okay, so that is now finished. The image scraper is finished. Uh, it should be able to scrape any sitemap. Um, but yeah, if it doesn't work, to be honest with you, it's not actually using image URLs anyway. So what you can do is you can delete any reference to image URLs within this script if you know what you're doing. But you could also just let it scrape. Or another thing you could do is you can make a little CSV like this using ChatGPT. So you can say page URL, comma, image URL and then just put pages and images in here. That's another way to do it. Unfortunately, I'm not the best coder in the world, so a lot of my scripts are a little bit weird, but it is what it is. Oh, actually, sorry guys, I didn't realize you could do this. You can also just write page URL dash image URL. I'll actually update the GitHub so that that doesn't confuse people. So we'll go to Claude image, uh, Autologger here, go to image URLs, and then we'll just put these here. So now if you download this, you won't actually need to do any of that. You can just uh, let it run. So you can see what it does is it sends a perplexity prompt. Let's just scroll up a little bit further. So the perplexity, perplexity prompt is find as much detailed information about this grant in the United States. Give me specifics. Any .gov websites can be used for finding images. Keywords is FedEx small business grant contest. So. Let's have a look. Eligibility. This business must be a for-profit entity with 1 to 99 employees. Let's see if that's true. So we'll go on the official page here. The application period has actually ended. So who may apply for the US FedEx Business Grants Program? Existing FedEx company? Companies with a valid shipping count that's been open for at least six months have fewer than 99 employees. Check. Business must be in operation for at least six months. Must have shipping and printing need. Must be a legal resident. So the contest runs from, runs from January to early May. Apply between March the 1st and then May. Yeah, okay, kind of. The entry usually lasts for about three weeks. The contest consists of four periods, entry submission, finalists judging, people's choice voting, and winners judging. And then what the writer actually does is it uses that information to then write an actual article. So you can see here, it's currently writing in HTML. The reason for that is because I want to just send this directly to WordPress using an importer. So I just got it to write in HTML. That's pretty much it, guys. That's all I wanted to talk about today. I really hope that this video and this script helps people out. This makes things a lot easier if you're writing about super specific topics that have super specific requirements. If you're watching all the way to the end, you're an absolute legend. And I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.